dark, the whispers of a sun, so many sun. Things to interpret. It's locked. Jonathan Reed, at last we meet. The cards warned me you would visit tonight. I beg your pardon, sir. Do I know you? Of course you do. Our mutual friend, Dr. Swansea, can't speak highly enough of you. My name is Usher. Usher Talltree. You are the leader of the Brotherhood, are you not? Primate of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole, to be precise. I'm really glad we met tonight. I love it when the cards tell me a truth. The cards told you to expect me? Yes, they tell me everything. They told me that you struggle hard not to take too many lives. Do you require medical attention? I'm fine, thank you, Jonathan. How do you measure the amount of blood on my hands? I told you. Cards always tell the truth. Well, most of the time. Is it possible to tell me my future? A vampire's fate is much more delicate to read, Doctor. But I can try. All right. Let me hear it. The walls of your prison have already been raised, Jonathan. But you will freely accept to be locked inside, full of hope for a better day. I would rather not know. How do you... I told you. Is it possible? Vampire. May I ask you about the Brotherhood? Of course. But I must warn you that there are some subjects we consider taboo, in spite of our fondness and acceptance of your kind. I know there is no love lost between the Guard of Prewen and the Brotherhood. What caused this rift? It was 1801. The Brotherhood was stronger then, a strength that made them hungry for ever greater power. An argument divided them, and the wound never healed. What was the nature of the disagreement? The problem was that both sides considered themselves the legitimate heirs of the original Brotherhood. We divide up the books, the relics, not always fairly or with consideration. Who founded the Brotherhood? That's precisely the kind of question I cannot answer. It is delicate and may reveal some of our secret traditions. So you're not just a club of academics and scholars? Once upon a time, very long ago, the Brotherhood did more than simply study the vampires. They took actions to eliminate the more ferocious and corrupted. Tell me about yourself. What do you do here, besides turning cards in the middle of the night? I'm for most a charlatan. For a few, I'm a vampire. And for you, I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. Some believe you to be a vampire. Who? The guard of Prewen, who else? For a time, they sent spies to observe my activities. And they even broke into my home to gather proof. Did they steal anything from you? A personal notebook they quickly took to their headquarters. All they had to do is to look at me. I'm aging. What better and definite proof that I'm not an immortal? Do you want your notebook back? If you ever find it, I'd be glad to have it back, of course. I do ask one thing, though. Do not read it, Jonathan. Some secrets are not meant to be revealed even to immortals. For how long have you been a primate? It was 15 years last year. What do you make of Dr. Swansea? Edgar is a brilliant and dedicated man. A man of his time, sometimes a little muddled, but always looking for new paths and new concepts. What can you tell me about the neighborhood? I really don't know. I don't often go outside. 
And when I do, it's usually to quite distant destinations. So you see nothing in the stars for me? You're a poor fortune teller, then. Oh, I can tell you many things. But they will only concern you, not the city. For example, I know that you offered your sister the final rest she asked for. Do the cards speak of my Mary? No. It's the burning aura of guilt that precedes you everywhere you go. Read my fortune. You have been chosen, Jonathan. I see on you the mark of a strong being, so powerful it didn't even reveal its strength. Can you read the cards for me? Are you sure you want to know what they will reveal? Yes, I am. It will cost you 150 shillings. Here is the money. The snake, a bitter woman, smiling as she pours poison in your cup. A shaming betrayal. Hate. Can you read the cards for me? Put the money on the table then, Jonathan. And open your mind. Here is the money. The sorceress. A heart-shaped trap built to entangle a loved one. Mirrors on every wall to see her own reflection constantly. Is there anything you could tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Aloysius Dawson? Yes, of course. We met on several occasions. With time, he got deeper and deeper into the occult. He's not the only one. It's been quite the fashion for several decades. The Golden Dawn, for instance, is just one example. True. Aloysius was a member of the Golden Dawn until 1900. Then his thirst for dark knowledge grew. I'm talking forbidden texts, readings which blackened his heart. Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander, yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. A red river, a song in the dark, the whispers of a sun. So many signs to interpret.
Dr. Reed. I am glad to see you again. Good evening, Miss Price. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you remember me? Dr. Reed? Yes, of course. You are the doctor who healed me and my mum. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Good to see you too, Carol. Are you all right? Oh, yes. I, I did not hurt myself recently. I know how to take care of myself now. I'm almost a grown-up. Is it true you often hurt yourself, Carol? Yes, it's true. I try to behave. I really do. But one way or another, I always end up injured or wounded. I'm so stupid. Why would you be stupid? It's like I can't help getting under my mother's feet. That's how I end up being pushed, or cut, or, or burned. You see, I'm a stupid girl, really. When exactly do these accidents happen? Ever since I was little. That's why I need to stay with Mum. I'm not capable of taking care of myself. Do you enjoy work? Oh, yes, Doctor. My mother raised me alone after my... Do you ever think about getting married now you're a woman? Oh, no, Dr. Reed. Mum always says I'm still a child who has no idea. Do you remember your father? No, I was just a baby then. Have you ever met the famous Aloysius Dawson? Yes, a very strange man. Not very nice. What do you mean? He said he was ready to pay good money for rare books and then laughed at what we showed him. Do you need my medical attention? Oh, please, sir. Do not waste your time with me. There is nothing to be worried about. Don't be shy. It's my duty to take care of you. Thank you, sir. Much obliged. What can you tell me of the people living nearby? I don't speak to many people, except our customers. It's not easy to make friends. And with the ep Goodbye, Carol. Dr. Reed, I am glad to see you. Good evening, Miss Price. How are you tonight? Dr. Reed! I didn't know you had returned from the war. I had a new doctor when you left, but he's not as kind as you. Always glad to see a former patient in good condition. It's been a long time. Too long indeed. And as a token of my appreciation, I'll grant you the best price if you fancy buying anything from my humble shop. May I look at your goods? It's always a pleasure to have you here. a little longer this time. Good evening, Miss. You know you... Tell me, Carolyn, do you often wound or hurt your daughter by mistake? No. I always thought it was Carol's clumsiness that caused these incidents. Maybe it's a family trait, Doctor. You really believe it's just bad luck and being clumsy, then? Of course, Doctor. What else could it be? I have nothing to hide. Does your daughter still worry you, Miss Price? I remember you were often concerned about her health. Have you not seen Carol since you returned? She's almost a young woman. So you're less afraid? Some things never change. Why would her innocence... She does not realize how cruel life can be. You have every reason to be cautious, Miss Price. Maybe you could talk with her, Dr. Reed. Have you noticed anything in particular? Other than you coming back to cheer me up. Nothing. What can you tell me about now? I'm still managing my shop. The only difference is, since the quarantine, we're open at night. 
Really? Have I changed that much? Don't get me wrong, Dr. Reed, you're still handsome. Tell me more about yourself. No new fear. Who would marry an old bat like me? Do you know Aloysius Dawson? Everybody knows him. He's only been to my shop once, though, looking for rare books and other intriguing antiques. Did he buy something from you? No, he left quickly. He almost laughed at my goods. Mr. Dawson may be a rich man, but you can't buy good manners. But isn't Aloysius Dawson known for his philanthropy? That was before his brother Robert died in an aeroplane crash. Since then, the remaining twin has turned into a heartless tycoon. Goodbye for now, Miss Price. I hope you can stay a little longer this time. Yes.